Hello there, I'm Leo Waldorf for Kit Guru, and this laptop is the ASUS Republic of Gamers G752. We're doing a preview here because this is not a final uh, release version of the laptop. It is a uh, prototype uh, that's close to finish, and the exact spec of this laptop doesn't match any of the three that will be coming to the UK. Um, so I'm not actually allowed to benchmark the thing, but what I will do is I'm just going to start uh, GTA 5 running, uh, so you can see the sort of frame rates you can expect because GTA 5 doesn't spit out uh, actual figures like 3D Mark does. Uh, now what you'll see here is it's going to power through the game without any trouble and that's because it's a Skylake Core i7 running GTX 970M graphics on a Full HD panel and therefore you'd expect it to play the game, that's what it does. If it was 4K it would probably struggle but uh, it is what it is, which is a high quality, high end laptop running a modern game with all the settings pretty much cranked to the max. You may have spotted there, we're pretty much using up all the graphics memory, uh, two and a half gigabytes out of three gigabytes. And uh, that's all jubbly. So also that red ring on the screen, that is uh, a Zeus Sonic Radar. Caused me some confusion at first. Uh, it's so you can see where the um, sounds are happening. So if you're someone is behind you, your little radar pops up and then you go, oh, they're behind me, bang, instead of trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, it's a neat thing. It's one of those things you can disable if you like. And in fact, it, uh, it uh, does highlight one aspect of this laptop, which is that uh, ASUS has packed in a certain amount of their software, um, some of which is uh, very useful, some of which is very impressive, and some of which just gets a bit over the top. We'll come to that in a moment. So this laptop, if this particular model was on sale in the UK and it's not, uh, this is uh, a G752VT, so that's Core i7 with uh, GTX 970M and 64 gigabytes of DDR4, would cost you two and a half grand. But that's not going to happen. Now, there are three models coming to the UK. So the VT that's coming to the UK is going to be significantly cheaper. So that's the GTX 970M. That's going to be £1,400. That's the entry level. That's going to have 16 gig of memory, uh, 128 gigabyte SSD, uh, one terabyte hard drive, £1,400. Uh, or you can have uh, a VY model with GTX 980M graphics, and there are two versions there. The £1,800 version has 256 gigabyte SSD, also a hard drive, 24 gig of RAM, or you can go up to 512 gigabyte SSD and 32 gigabytes of RAM for £2,100. So more storage, it costs more money. Um, so I'm not particularly surprised this would actually cost you two and a half thousand if you wanted to borrow that memory. Why you'd want 64 gigabytes of DDR4, I cannot begin to imagine. Um, so three models, 1400, 1800, 2100, uh, which strikes me as a pretty good range. Obviously none of those is cheap. I mean, you, you can't claim they are, but they all have this 17.3 inch screen chassis, big chunky things. They're north of four kilos, south of four and a half kilos. Uh, there are some variants to do with batteries and such like which we don't come into the equation here because you know This isn't as I say a proper review and the power brick there is a 180 watt unit Which is the sort of thing you'd expect to power that processor and um, all that memory and that graphics uh, The screen interesting stuff here which is that it's full HD. Now, I was told there were going to be options to do 4k uh, Presumably they're not happening in the UK. I guess they're happening elsewhere in the world I'm fine with this laptop not being 4K because when your nose is sort of here and you're playing at full HD, it looks absolutely dreamy. The quality of the IPS panel is good. These days, you actually have to struggle with a, with a reasonable laptop. Forget the budget stuff. With a decent laptop, the panels these days are really good. Um, there are variants on IPS out there. It's not just IPS. There are different types of IPS. And they all look really... Viewing angles are great. Colors are fabulous. Brilliant. This, more of the same. Love it. Bumping up to 4K uh, wouldn't really yield you any massive benefits. It would, on the other hand, kill the graphics. Uh, 980M would be struggling. Desktop 980, that might do the trick. So the fact they've gone away from 4K, or they've not gone to 4K, they've stayed at um, Full HD, I'm fine with that. One curiosity, one of the features of these three laptops is that, and that's the thing running, right, so we can agree that uh, played absolutely beautifully. Um, one of the... Uh, features of this particular range of laptops is they have G-Sync on the panel. 
Uh, now, G-Sync with NVIDIA graphics, good idea, nice one. The thing is that the panels are 60 hertz panels. Um, I thought they might be 120 or 144, and they kind of give you the most out of, you know, whether you're hitting 70 or 80 frames per second, it's gonna give you a lovely, uh, smooth uh, action. But no, the fact that they're 60 hertz panels and it uh, has G-Sync says to me that um, Asus is expecting you to crank up your quality settings to the max and uh, and there we go so now here it doesn't actually look that brilliant and if we just open the Asus uh, control panel for Republic of Gamers stuff uh, hopefully you get a better look at the colors um, what it's saying to me is that G-Sync is because they're expecting when you whack up the IQ settings it's going to sometimes drag your uh, frame rates down below 60 so, and G-Sync has a role to play when you're in that 30 to 60 frames per second. We typically see that when you've got kind of lesser graphics, but in this case we're talking decent graphics, but you want the max of quality settings, and you want it to be smooth at, say, 45 frames per second, which does after all work. I mean, it's only when you get below 25, 30, it won't be good. Uh, when you're in the 30 to 60, with the right technology, games can look really good, and it says to me, Full HD G-Sync GTX 970M in this particular model, GTX 980M in the two other models. Uh, Azus is determined that this is going to look the absolute business, which I totally applaud that attitude. I like that a great deal. Um, it also says to me when you add in other other bits and pieces, for example, we have XSplit Games Casting, we have Nahimic Audio. G-Sync. That says to me that Azus is coming gunning for MSI. MSI has a terrific range of gaming laptops at the moment and this is saying Azus they want some of that action which is good for us UK gamers because competition means that we get uh, better laptops better quality hardware hopefully for less money that's a good thing now looking around the chassis um, luckily with all this PR material that I got sent there is some scope for taking the mic and that has to be a good thing um, so uh, the styling, which is actually very smart, I mean, it, it's kind of borderline a bit bling. You've got a metallic finish all over. Uh, this is, uh, it's clearly copper, okay? It's titanium gray and copper, but they call it cupreous material, which is a little bit sweet. Also, Iron Man styling, Iron Man mashup, a uh, bit of a peculiar thing, but if you flip it over, you'll see that on the underside, you've got a kind of uh, engraved etch sort of thing going on. You've also got this translucent panel where you can see part of the, um, uh, the cooling inside to do with the uh, uh, graphics and the uh, processor. Unusual, not quite sure what the point is, no harm in it, but uh, it does suggest that it's um, as much a toy as a serious piece of gaming hardware. Um, the cooler is a conventional cooler for this GTX 970M model. The GTX 980 uh, goes to vapor chamber. Uh, I would imagine you wouldn't be able to tell two coolers apart by eye. Vapor chamber um, hardware, as we saw when we did the Cooler Master thing um, a few months ago, uh, you can get some epic TDP ratings out of coolers if you go to vapor chamber. They had, they had an air cooler at Cooler Master for a CPU which did handle 250 watts. We've seen similar coolers from other manufacturers, but you look at it and you think, how can this be? And it's the vapor chamber that makes all the difference. Um, so taking a tour around the laptop, so we've got the styling. I like the styling, the styling is good. Uh, the wording I don't much like. We have ports and connectors. We have a Kensington lock, forget about it. Two USB 3, DVD drive. In this model, that DVD drive is actually a Blu-ray burner. The three models coming to the UK, it's a Blu-ray ROM. Uh, and there we have a card reader. There are, I think, no ports at the front. No, no ports at the front. And the rear is all ventilation and such like. And it does kick out a certain amount of heat under load with that sleek Republic of Gamers logo on the hinge there. Uh, the two speakers are actually located here, so when you flip the screen up they're behind the screen in this sort of pod, um, there is also a subwoofer under the front, which in this prototype, work in progress, call it what you will model, the uh, sub is actually disconnected. I had a look inside the chassis, I was gonna show you the hardware. I chickened out, there are four ribbon cables going hither and everywhere, which I've had to release, and I knew I was gonna cause problems. But I did note that the subwoofer was disconnected. But again, uh, this is not a full review, so that's absolutely fine. And then around this side, we have a whole stack of ports and connectors. So we have the power brick connector, we have Ethernet, we have HDMI, which is actually 4K HDMI. Uh, so um, I'm assuming that's 2.0. Um, so if you are determined to do 4K gaming, hook it up to your TV. Uh, we have mini display port, two USB 3. We have a USB type C Thunderbolt connector, uh, which interesting this is surely the connector for the future 
as to what peripherals you're going to hook up to it whether you're going to have fast storage or whatever extra displays yada yada but uh, those connectors i mean certainly in the first instance these you can use to charge whatever your next mobile phone might be but uh, that thunderbolt type c connector uh, that has the potential to be absolutely revolutionary and the fact this laptop has it very good and then we have headset jacks so we have a full coll collection of absolutely everything like it um software that they included so i mentioned the for example the um uh, sonic uh, radar which that red ring can get a bit confusing at first you understand you either you go with it or you turn it off other bits of software so we've got pop-ups for the asus web storage which is their cloud stuff uh, it's a handy feature it can get annoying mcafee oh dear lord mcafee pop up well, i'm going to scan your system go away uh what this is saying to me is asus is trying and it's trying very hard um, but there are times you wonder if it might not be trying just that little bit too hard. Um, that uh, gaming console I showed you briefly uh, with the Azusa Republic of Gamers button there is uh, very neat. Um, you can do all sorts of things which I haven't done with this because I was advised that the software is being developed. So you can have profiles, you can have different overclocking profiles, uh, you know, regular hurrah and lots. Uh, you can monitor what your stuff's doing. You can disable bits of software if you want to free up memory. All good stuff. Uh, it's the sort of thing I like to see from Zeus because they generally do a blooming good job with it. And on this laptop, again, I'm going to go back to this thing. This, To me, this laptop is a declaration of war against MSI. They haven't said that to me, but that's how I'm interpreting it. And I think this is a very good thing indeed. Um, but for me, the big news is that... A cut down version of this laptop, but still with a 128 gigabyte NVMe SSD, a one terabyte hard drive, 16 gig of RAM rather than 64, uh, Core i7 Skylake, and GTX 970M, £1,400. You can't say it's a snip and a bargain, but that's a very sensible price. Or you can go up a next step, you know, GTX 980, or you can really go to town. Uh, and the fact that this version two and a half grand it suggests that somewhere out there there's a version even more expensive a gtx 980 presumably heading towards three grand which is a bit bonkers but there we go so there is a colossal array of uh, g752 laptops out there we're going to see three models in the uk that seem very sensible and i cannot wait to get my hands on one for a proper review so this is the award for kit guru this is a preview of the rog g752